So this is the first of three presentations for P-16-024 Engineering Services for JRTC Design. Um, today the sessions will be held at 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 4 o'clock. Um, in the room we have representatives from the various parts of the city and from JTA and from our CM at Risk um, group who are going to be viewing your presentation. We'll go around the room and do presentations. First, though, I want to address some safety concerns. Um, in, a, in an emergency, don't use the elevator. Use the two stairwells located on the two sides of the elevator or in the far right-hand corner, kitty corner to this room. There is another staircase there. Uh, men's room is on the far end. Women's room on this end. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. Okay. Um, today, we will give you 45 minutes for your presentation. I'll start the clock. Once we turn it over to you, we do the, the introductions and then we'll turn it over to you. And then there will be a 30-minute question and answer period. We do have scripted questions. However, committee members, please feel free to ask anything that comes to mind as you, we go through the presentation. Um, this meeting is being recorded and I think we'll start over here. With presentation. Thank you. Robert, CMTS, Balfour. David Campbell, Balfour B. Victor Gilpin, Balfour B. Construction. Amy Tabassian, GTA. Cleveland Ferguson, JTA. Brad Dover, JTA. Lisa Darnall, JTA. Alicia Batson, JTA. Sharonda Rush, JTA. Neil Nance, JTA. Jim Clement, Downtown Investment Authority. Jackie Glass, um, JTA. Pamela Lee, JTA. Leanne Rassler, JTA. Okay, gentlemen. Ted Chan, Via Concepts. Mark Easter, Atlantic Engineering, Services, Structural Engineer. Christina Meadows, Via Concepts. Uh, Brian Burke, Via Concepts, Director of Planning. Brian Stoddard with the Planning Engineering Services. Brian Stoddard, Director of Planning. 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 Okay, I, I noticed when we were going through, other, through the room on this side, please make sure your buttons on your microphones are red and that you are speaking into them when you come, when you. Um, speak, okay? All right, because I'm not hearing the same level over there, and I want to make sure that this the, is um, recorded efficiently. One mic, his mic, that they, they couldn't figure out how to turn okay. it on. Well, there's this mic here, that too. Is it picking up on that one? Okay. It's reinforcing. Okay, great. Um, all right, so are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's go. Okay, thank you, and uh, I'm very excited to be here and get this uh, behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we already introduced our team, and let's just jump right in in uh, what we, um, how we answer the proposal. Um, let's talk a little bit about myself and Big Concept because I don't think you guys know me. You know, we're not a international firm like some of the other people. Uh, I have been in the business for over 14 years as Big Concepts, and I have a, a plethora of experience in transportation. Um, started designing the Jacksonville Inner Airport in 1988 and uh, came back in uh, 1996 and continued to design the airport. In fact, we worked with Balfour Beatty in uh, 1997 or so uh, on the airport. And I also work in the airport access system, um, access program in uh, New York City where we did the light rail that connects La LaGuardia to um, Kennedy from Manhattan and various intermodal station. All those stations uh, is part of my design and the work is actually featured in uh, Urban Lee in uh, Hamsley Palace. Um, with that, um, I'm very excited to do a transportational um, motor-modal project. Uh, it's one thing that I always liked as a kid growing up in Hong Kong where me and my mom, we always take the bus, take the train, you know, and I always liked the dynamics of the center. And of course, you know, I never knew I was going to be an architect. And the reason I choose architect is architecture is A. And that's how I choose it, not because <laughs> I like these things. So um, enough about me. Let's jump right into it. Um, we are experienced. We are architects, architects as well. We do a lot of big works with uh, CH2M Hills, Reynolds Smith and Hills, AECOM and all those things, and you might not hear from us because, hear, hear of us because we're kind of like the ghost writers. Um, in every project, we start with the history, 
Um, we look at La Villa, what it used to be is a vibrant place. It has a lot of entertainment district, a lot of housing. And it's really where is that for a lot of the African American community and it's very, you know, with the jazz and everything. And then it turned into a, a train, train station where, you know, it was also very active and as the car become more prevalent and it started to decline and now is more, you know, need to be revitalized. It's not rather, you know, we're gonna, you know, revitalize it, you know, now. It's going to be revitalized. It's the timing that's very important. Um, and we are making the first step, and which is a very crucial and vital step. So we look at the site. The site, when I look at all the um, previous proposal or previous study that you guys done, I don't see the topography. And I was surprised when I got there and how the difference of the topography is. And we always look at the site and the adjacent area where there's a major highway next to us, there's a train station and convention center, a lot of on grade parking. And you know, we look at the vista, we look at how people will perceive what we're gonna end up with and how we're gonna use the site because there's a lot of things about socioeconomic that I can't really go into. It's a very, very tough thing to, to, um, to get a grasp, but we can start something and we can test the site mm -hmm. and what works and what doesn't work. And it's a process, master planning is really a process that you go into and you make the adjustment. And things like downtown development does help and you know what we do with the streetscape, very important. Now first, I look at the first thing we got from you are the topo maps. And then when I visit the site, and I notice that's a lot of gray. I don't know. You know, it's hard to judge how, how much it is. From uh, Adam Street to Foresight, that's actually around 11 foot difference. And you know, how could we take advantage of that? How can we take advantage of the location and design something that you know is good for the community as well as JTA, as well as being a motor uh, motor, motor station. And that is a very big issue, as well as being urban and thinking about the future of how this place is going to generate more uh, development and how this place will be absorbed into this development. And we will also go in that because everything is interlinked. Everything is multimodal on this design. <laughs> so, so we first look at one of the big tasks was iconic. And we're, we're thinking, the team, what is iconic about Jacksonville? What is, you know, what's iconic about um, being in Lavella, being downtown, in the region, and also transportation? So one of the big things about Jacksonville is a river town. And in a river town, what do you have? Bridges. Bridges are the, are the element that is very straightforward and it's very precise and you know, very feasible to do. And, and uh, it overcome adversity, such as a river or a gorge or whatever you have. And that's translate a lot into uh, transportation. Because what does transportation do? They find a direct route to get the goods and the people across safely and on time. And bridges are very much like that. And that's how we link the element of the bridges to our iconic element. And you will also see that later. <clears throat> so we talk about the bridges, how is iconic. And the technical aspect we mentioned about how we could structurally cross it. Some could be cable. You know, you throw a cable, you start constructing. Some are, you know, today's technology are many. And what I want you guys to get out of this presentation is, you know, that at the end saying, hey, his building is actually not that extraordinary. Why do I say that? You will find out why. It is extraordinary to look at. It does look like a bridge. It looks like a span that is spanning 300 feet. And that's how you view it from 95, which a lot of the people will go through going north. And that's the reason why we lift the building up to the third floor. 
we don't want people to look at the roof of our building. We want JTA to stand proud up there as the people traverse north in 95. Also get a glimpse of it coming down the south, but your main vista is 95. And we simplify it to a very simple trust that is, you know, really is like the beginning when they build a railroad bridge type of trust and also the main street bridge. And the environment, how, how we deal with that in the environment. We want to do a compact design, which is the least um, um, impact on the area. We also, as an architect, you know, people always say, you know, we have client come, oh, you know, we want to build this thing, and the view over here is beautiful. I want my building to be right there. And my question is, why? You already have a beautiful view. Why don't you go to a site that's less beautiful and make that more beautiful? And that is part of also our concept. We're taking the area that's tucked in to the highway and where, you know, probably, you know, the people who's going to purchase the site, like, I don't want that next to the highway. It's noisy, it's <coughs> what, what have you, and I don't have four <coughs> street in front. So what we do is we save the other parcel for future development, and which means you will save the money of developing that area. You also will get a higher value once this thing is you know, in place. And, and what's great about a transportation motor motor center is not just any other building. It's bringing in people from all over. The Greyhound's bringing people. The Amtrak is going to, in the, the future, Amtrak's going to bring in people. The, um, you know, the, the um, JTA is <coughs> bringing in a lot of local. And it's a bustling center where a lot of action is going on. And design challenges. So we quickly list, you know, we, we only have around a month to do this, so we really have to work quickly. So we quickly list what our challenges are from what we see from your program. And those are basically the vehicular, the pedestrian safety, security, you know, the site, the future growth, progressive being iconic, and the stormwater. Uh, by the way, this, this whole uh, presentation is geared toward this published thing about how we earn the point of aesthetic, uh, functionality, and uh, constructability. It's exactly laid out in this order. Um, so, so you could kind of you know, see why, why we do in cer certain things. Now, in, in, in any design, um, and I've been in it for quite a long time, you always design for the thing that are the biggest and the toughest to do. It's similar to like when you have a jar. You, you have to fill in these rocks, these pebbles, and these sand. You don't throw in the sand first and then throw in the, the rock and it won't fit. So what you do, you design for the rock. You throw it in first, and that's what we did. We design for the buses first. So once we design the bus, then we see how things would generate, how the movement is. Now, that is very important because on fun functionality, you can't, you know, squeeze in a bus. It's, it's 45 footer, 40 footer with turning radius that are, you know, well beyond that. So, so. In the master plan, not only do you deal with socioeconomic problems, you're also dealing with the site, and you're also dealing with what's in it, what's the dynamic, the pedestrian, the bus, you know, all those are very important. So in the master planning, what, what we did is we did a lot of research as with all our projects of master planning, and we find a study done in 1999, talk about La Villa, and there's a lot of good point they're talking about one of them is that you know, the government must give incentive, and it's true, because Jacksonville is unlike New York. It's not there yet, and we're going to get it there, and this is the first step. And the reason being is, one of the reasons, the land value is still inexpensive. You know, people don't want to spend money on buildings, and you know, they basically don't want to experiment, you know, versus when you're there, then they go, oh, yeah, we could build this. You know, even though it costs a lot, we could spend money because 
there are people to fill it. And that's why I said the timing is very important. And to ignite that timing, government and partners, like private partnership, must be here for us to develop this area. And you know, unless you know, there's something happened and somebody, you know, a big company move in, there's suddenly some influx of capital, and, and that's rare. And um, so that's one of the reasons um, this, you know, reading this uh, master plan, um, what the study is about how, you know, the uh, like Ivy left and everything left and how it become kind of a, a desert. But we're hoping and to the best of we can, I think this center will address some of those issues by being compact and going back to what we're trying to do. Um, so master planning La Villa, uh, we will go back into it about you know how we do it and um, how how that's going to be in the future, and um, how we incorporate the pedestrian and a bicycle into it to be a very uh, well-designed urban center. You must design those elements, and some of those elements, you know, I may be getting a little ahead of myself, but like the sidewalk, it needs to be wide enough. So, you know, people could walk without thinking there's a big bus right next to them and they could walk. You know, the visibility, things being visible, where, you know, you walk in the sidewalk, the deli could see you, people from the lobby could see you, people across the street, people from the, from the uh, um, bridges that using the multimodal center. All those elements we incorporate for visibility, for safety, and for connection purposes. Um, this is a uh, master plan. I don't know if you could see. Um, I don't have a pointer. I'm working off a mouse. Um, just for, you know, showing you what we did. The Greyhound is on the second floor. The reason being in the second floor is I went to the Greyhound station and there's people using that station are not, not actually customers. They use their locker to store stuff. They use their restroom to clean themselves. And, you know, so when you lift it, you eliminate some of those and make the facility nicer for the customer. Because, you know, when they see a formal lobby, they see, you know, you have to go through a certain area, then they're less likely to go into that facility when they don't have, you know, a bus pass or they're not using it. Um, and also it's a safety feature. Um, and we talk about how, you know, a multimodal center connect. Well, in order to connect, you also should have separation. And we will talk about that, but since this slides up, I, I just want to talk about the uh, Greyhound. The blue here re represent the incoming of the Greyhound. Right now, the Greyhound facility is somewhere over here. And um, we have limit the blue where you just loop in, and then you go up. And from the north, you loop in, and you go up, and then you circle around. And then you, you egress in the light blue, where you egress di directly to Adam Street, where there's a ramp going north and south. That's absolutely minimize most all time for Greyhound being in the city street. Why is that important? Safety. You know, less likely they will have access. You know, speed. They could get in and out of here within a split second. Thirdly, fuel. You save the fuel. You know what all those things are? Those things look like a perfect candidate for a Tiger Grant. And, you know, we also think about that. I read up on the Tiger Grant what they needed, and we would love to discuss more of that with you. I'm sure you guys know that process a lot better than I do. But, you know, that's something that we think, you know, is not only the Tiger Grant, you know, central office, the DOT also. I think when someone see a project that is so well thought out, they're more likely saying, hey, you know, these guys really know what they're doing. We should be part of that project. We should invest in that, and everybody want to see a success. So 
Travels, traffic circulation, we talk about that, and you know, I have a lot of material, and you know, feel free to ask questions when question time, something that I miss. I'm sure I'm gonna miss you know, a few things. So basically, the buses, the office, the Greyhound, the station, pedestrian, car, pick up, drop off, those are very urban elements. And you know, service and delivery, don't forget that. Uh -oh. um, it's not advancing. <laughs> well, anyway, could, service and delivery. We also incorporate service delivery in, in the project, and I will sh show that to you later. Every aspect of it, and, and when I talk about urban, um, the issue being urban is all the facility has a street presence. And people could go there, drop people off, know exactly where to go. And that's one thing about our design. We, are, we design things as I do airport. I use the ceiling, I use the environment to intuitively move people without signage. Signage is a secondary thing and even tertiary. And why do we do that? First of all, it's a great thing. I, I think you know when you go to a place, you naturally know where to go. Secondly, it's safety. When you are trying to look for a place on the street level or in a car, guess what? You're not paying attention to things around you as much because you're busy looking for that place. And when it's intuitive, then they see it. That's where they're going. So in their brain, you know, we're concentrating, but we know where we're going. So it doesn't, you know, so it's a very safety feature that we're doing. Of course, we're going to have wayfinding as well because, you know, some people, you know, everybody do different things differently. Um, this is the key plan, and, and it illustrates, you know, most of the main element on here. Uh, this is the JRTC center. It's tucked on the highway. And this is the ramp to, to the second, second story of Greyhound. This is the garage you asked us to look at, and I'll talk more about that later, how it connects to it. And this is the chiller plant. One of the things is we could use DX unit and probably save money on the initially, but in five years, if you do a chiller plant, it will get your money back in five years. And the percentage is only like you know, one-third more of having a rooftop unit. And I think it's very well worth the investment. And again, you know, we, we're doing this thing without your input and you know, without the CM's input. And once you know, we are chosen on this, we could go in depth on the study and what is the most appropriate you know, mechanical unit for you and those type of uh, element. This is the tram station. This is how we connect to it. This is a third floor uh, connection so you could descend to, to this. And another major element that I, I didn't uh, talk about, we are suggesting that you continue the tram line and circle around Brooklyn and have two stations. Brooklyn is a changing area. And you know there's a lot of young people living in the big development. And these young people don't like cars, a lot of them. They prefer you know driving electric car or they prefer to ride a bike or take the transit. And it's a changing paradigm. And when you, you know, go into that area and grab that, those people, your tram should have more ridership. Um, and you know, it also is a good connection to an area and also probably to Five Point, to the Riverside Art Market. And you have these people to come and really make your place more vibrant. Again, it's part of the motor beauty of a motor-modal center. Um, so, you know, 13 is the egress. We also have this area is for taxis dropping people off in the, what we call the JRTC lobby, which is a lobby for the Greyhound, also lobby for the future Amtrak, also lobby for, for the uh, tramway. It's an area that you could get electronic ticketing or you, know, you could staff somebody. It all depends how you do your operation. And so 12 is, you know, and that will go 
when we really get into design. That's the north elevation, and we actually built in iconic element throughout the building and how how the thing how the thing works. So this is the ground floor plan, and as you can see, this is the requirement for the bus transfer of the JTA, uh, and this is the this area is the uh, JTA, and this is the, you know, the, the function of the operation that pertains to this. The beauty of this, once again, this is all glass, and it's actually in a level that's around four foot higher than the buses. And we're gonna have bus, you know, this is a plaza where we could have bicycle parking, which people feel, you know, they lock their bike, they know there are people looking at them. You know, because it's behind glass, they, they can't really see in. So everything is very visible here. And we also design in landscape features throughout. So when you're waiting for the bus, you know, you could see that you're in Florida, you're in Jacksonville. And, you know, not just a bunch of, you know, concrete that's there. Um, and this is the deli, which is a street present with outside, um, outside uh, tables and once again it's very deep. This is where the private car um, drop off is. So you know if somebody drop you off you know where to go. And, and it's, it's tough to design for buses. You know you only get off on one side. And same thing with passenger car. You can't have the passenger car come over here. You don't want to anyway because you have to loop around. But you know you, you have to drop people off on the right most of the time. But for taxes, it's fine. They always ride in the back. And, and so all those elements are really urban thing that we incorporate it into it. And we also have you know, a circle that you know, kind of signify that you reach your destination. And built in a rubber barrier so the bus feels safe. That, you know, but if, you know, since that's you know, not a real wide road, if a bus breaks down, you could just go over the barrier. And, come across. And we also introduce rubber barriers through here because when these guys come out and this transfer to a one-way street, one, one way street that the arrow shows how it's going to function, that we don't want these guys to merge because the bus is coming out this way. So these guys will merge afterward and they're contained and as they slow down. So element like that is all thought about and how we also propose, and you know, we, we saw the um, uh, Greyhound and we saw the, all the study, and some of them, they, they do have an area where they have a bus wash and have some ready bus, and we could have a loop back and have that so they could clean their bus, they could wash their bus, and then loop it back and come back around. And we are taking a little bit off of uh, this, uh, this, this private property, but in return, we're giving them a good parking, good parking lot that they could use, and you know some some of the trade-off that that I think we could work through. And I know I actually know Mitchell, the guy who own own that building. Um, so, and then this just shows some of the highlight. What what this is, the dock area here. You know, you could actually accommodate a truck. You know, if you want to move some big stuff to JTA office, or to, um, or to Greyhound, and that's also a dock here for you know trash and things for the um, for the uh, deli as well as JTA as well as uh, as well as Greyhound, because the cores are here, this area, this area, and this area, and uh, it, it would you know show you how that's going to work. Uh, the garage. So we asked the task force to design a garage, a future garage, and you know, where it work with the system. Uh, this is the ground floor. How you come into the garage and you go up, and you know, you could get your ticket or you have uh, automatic, uh, automatic uh, pass that you know scan through. And this is reserved for uh, uh, commercial development, maybe rental cars. Or, or whatever you have, maybe another eatery or some type of office. Um, this garage is around 
you know, between 900 and 1,000 car, I think last I count is around 900 and 30 cars. Um, it's five stories. Uh, first story, you really don't have any parking. And it's the most inexpensive way you park on a slope and you circulate. Um, the core of it with the, with, the, um, with the elevator and stair, this is the fourth level where it ties into the JTA uh, uh, fourth level as well. Um, so you take the bridge and you actually go to the um, boardroom, which is the biggest uh, room, uh, 4,000 square feet. Um, that, you know, we also thought about you, we could make the JTA facility also function as a community center. And we did that by how we separate and use control. So the JTA office itself can be all locked down without using, you know, with that core being operational for the community. For, you know, if they have some big meetings or somebody in downtown has some big meeting. And also they could <coughs> access that for the garden level. You know, there, there are many studies shown, um, actually I just heard this in the NPR the other day, um, where they say people are the most happy being outside. And people are even happier when they're outside and they have green spaces. And people are even happier being outside with green spaces and water. Now we could put water in there if you want, but you know, we, we just think about the maintenance issue of it. And even for the garden, we could use potted plant where we could change it out and not really use it as a giant planter. But we could also design it that way, depending on what. And we could also design like urban gardens, you know, for the community to take care of, perhaps, you know, those things have become very popular. So we thought about it. Yeah, you know, we, we do the, all these things, and will anybody understand us? <laughs> so, so we say, we got to do some diagram to simplify it, you know, because we're in it every day. We talk about this, and, you know, it's like, using acronym, we could throw out acronym, we think everybody understands, so that's not true. So we did this diagram. Um, it's as simple as this. The, the offices are really in the L shape building. And the short L is really the Greyhound on the upper level. And the ground level is mixed. The structure for vehicle is actually in a rectangle in, you know, at grade and second level. And the JTA is on the red. You know, whatever is in pink, and this is the volume, you know, part of the volume uh, of the auditorium that tie in, as I talk about, tie in to the, uh, to the parking lot. Um, that is right there, so it's easily that, you know, after our people come here, they go and use this facility, everything's already locked down, and they could use all these Again, it's a multimodal facility, even for the usage of community and JTA and whoever that traverses through it. So this is a more detail of the first floor. You can see the, the lobby, the deli, the JRTC lobby here. This is the transit operation where you have the view. You know, you have these green oasis area where you can see throughout the site. And you know the bus flow in like this and flows out, and almost like the St. John's River flowing under the bridge. The bridge being the JTA office. Here's the bus level of, of the um, of the Greyhound. You enter through here. You could take the core and the elevator for the accessibility, and then you go up. You know there's queuing line, ticket sales. You know waiting go onto your bus, uh, bus driver's lounge, and all these facility. And what you see in pink is part of the lobby for the JTA. And here's how it functions. You come up, you park, whatever it is, you go in, you go out. And here's a crossing where it's flat for the pedestrian, and the bus ha have a kind of like a speed table, not a hump. It's work a lot better <laughs> than, a, than a hump. It's less bumpy. And then this is your ingress in, and you will have a barrier here. So the buses never cross. 
ever. You come in like this, you leave like this, it never crosses. Very safe. JTA administration. This is according to the program. Um, there are areas that we feel that you actually need, like areas like this where it will accommodate, you know, some of the people coming through. It's basically mini lobbies, you know, for the for the uh, 4,000 square foot. I, I think now it's three, but we're already way in it. And uh, and these are the cores, and then this is the garden. These areas are for ventilation, and also the way it's designed uh, after 9-11, that's, that's a lot of issue about safety design, and in the airport we address that, in the federal building we address that also. And that is one reason why the Greyhound is set this way, and this is lift up. The Greyhound is never under the JTA facility, so that eliminates anybody who might have a bomb, you know, well planted. And these facility, uh, Mark will go over, is concrete, and we find it, uh, you know, very feasible to do that way. Um, so, and the chiller yard is right here. The chiller yard is bounded by bridges, so it's kind of well hidden. <coughs> I think they're cool, but most people don't. <laughs> um, here's the. Admin office, the office of the CEO is this part, and it's all you know, a separate, but you could view in. And here's the finance and technology, and here's the boardroom. Once again, you know, I, I'm just guessing at the adjacency. I figure finance is a you know, pretty touchy subject, and it needs to be by the CEO. And we also use interior stairs, so it, you know, it fosters more um, relationship between inter-office department and also it gives light and airiness to the place and also how we set it up there are area where the light come in even though you're at a cube you could see and the building is narrow so there's plenty of light coming in and the building is set as I talked before about sites and orientation this these are passive thing that you do that is sustainable and is east west direction is long because your your sun in Florida in the west is very brutal and what you have is you have the core of solids, and you have very little way of heating up this building versus your north-south is broad, and that's how you handle things you know, passively and still being sustainable. And, and the Greyhound, yes, is facing the long way, north-south, but it's so deep in that the sun would, and the heat gain never, never gets there. And, and uh, you know, let's talk about uh, more about... Um, the um, expansion um, of uh, zip cars. You know, these are the future thing that you might want to think about connecting. Uber, you know, electric, you know, car rental we mentioned. Um, aesthetics, you know, that's really, you know, what I do. <laughs> Trying to make things beautiful. Um, image of La Villa, again, this is, you know, one of the First, the railroad bridge, even a bridge very close to here. Now, there are other elements that, you know, that you might not know that we work in. Here's, here's a, oh, what I recognize as the old uh, Greyhound bus. And if you look at the elevation of uh, the, the city elevation of the Greyhound, you will see reminiscent of the angle. You will see reminiscent of the rib um, metal on the facade that evokes the old Greyhound buses. And I tell you why that's important. You know, as designer, as architect, you know, most every one of us could give you what you want in your program. That's the square footage, that's how big the building is, you know, what you need and how to answer it. But not my, many architects could give you and answer the human aspect of the design. And that is the touchy-feely type of feeling that evoke you, you know, that, that when you go to a place that you go, hey, you know, I, I really feel good about this. And it could be that in the childhood, you know, your, your parents take you to have ice cream and there's this shop with a canopy and then you see and that bring you that memory. And this is what we're trying to do 
when we go to look at the history and look at the site and those type of things. Because if I mention the word home, every one of you have a visual in your head. And you know, that's very powerful. And that is the human aspect of architecture that you must answer to have a successful project. So another thing that playfully done, this is downtown. You see this graphic? It looks like a train, right? This is actually the city grid. Our site is right here. This is 275. This is the egress ramp to Forsyth Street. This is uh, Jaguar Stadium. And we use this graphic, and those blackout are the windows of the north elevation. And one thing that we like to do, um, when I was little, you know, growing up in the east, I like scroll painting. Scroll painting, you know, those, you know, really cool looking scenes with water flowing and funky mountain and trees that is on a scroll. And the beauty of those things is you, you look at it and you discover things. And another beauty of those things is it's not the artist who does it that makes it important. It's the people who view it. And that's why you see those chops, those red chops on there. It's not the signature of the artist. It's the mayor who, who saw it and approved of it. It's, it's the you know, emperor who saw it. You know, that's the ultimate chop. Or some dignitary saw it and approved it. That's why you see all these red marks. You know, it's not like, you know, I'm, a, I'm Picasso. I do this. And this same thing goes with this facility. What we want is everybody who loves it approve of it. And that's the success of it. And that's what we're trying to achieve. So here's that elevation again. This, this, is the, um, this is the train. This is also the city block. And you know, that's in the north side. So you, you know, it's only viewed by the local mostly. And, you know, and hopefully someone one day come in and say, wow, I didn't know this exists. That's pretty cool. You know, as I design, I always design as I'm a child in the facility. If I like to go to that facility and just walk around and meander, it's a success. And cool things like this, I like. <laughs> I think you would too. <laughs> this is the street level, you know, the urban side of it. Again, you have street presence here. You know, the, the private car drop off, the deli with the outside. This is the service area with the dumpsters and the egress. <laughs> this is the iconic trust, and we will explain that later about quickly. You know, it looks like it's spanning this way. It's not really. Every one of these is picked up by, by the other one. That's what I meant by you think it's extraordinary. After this is done, it's really not that extraordinary, but we make it so. Um, so here's the grand stair. The grand stair, why did we do it? Is that too ostentatious? No. Two reasons why we do it, two main reasons. One is for the safety of the people and the health of the people. People, you know, are, you know, we want to encourage people taking the stair. There's also a study found that if you take the stair every day at work and you will be healthier like people going out in the gym every day. So we make this stair to encourage the worker to take the stair so everybody be healthier and it's good for JTA. The other thing is, is the safety aspect. If someone that is, you know, look like they're gonna do something bad, you call up in the front desk, they're coming your way. If they're not fit, they're too tired before they reach the third floor and you could just tackle them, no problem. <laughs> Here, here's, here's, see how this is the trust? Actually, I have a slide for that. I'm speeding up because this is the overall facility. Here's some of the view of the Greyhound. Here's the street level of the JRTC. And what I talk about, the angle of the bus and the materials used. And uh, here's the lobby of, of JTA. Here's a nice shot as it looks from the highway. And here's the corner, urban corner. Nice shot of it. And we also incorporated the river, um, which is like the ebb and flow 
in the lobby as you go in. That's the grand stairs. Uh, the landscape features, uh, more landscape features. See how airy it is within the bus because it's high on one side? Um, Here's um, the drawing of the third floor white in the upper lobby you could see through. And, and the, the transparency, you can make it all you want. You know, we, we can make it reflective glass where they can and you could see out. You know, whatever you want, we could achieve. We could even do it with a gas where you click on a switch, it becomes opaque, opaque. And you could click off a switch, it becomes, you know, it's, it, it's a clear glass. This is the office of the CEO, really. The, he could see the garden and, and uh, this is uh, the lobby of the uh, boardroom, the 4,000 square foot boardroom, and uh, also the bridge going across for safety reason. This is where you are uh, in the garden with the iconic trust. And the cost, the cost, because we use, you know, this is not really an extraordinary building. We use basically typical construction and, you know, there's no huge, you know, span or anything, the cost is minimized. And actually this building is a lot bigger than 40,000 square foot because we incorporate these cores, we incorporate these lobbies, we incorporate these stairs and all those safety features. But as you can see, I think we could achieve this goal even though, you know, when we work with Balfour Beatty and we have done it before, we just knock out what we need to do and we could do it. It's up to you. And then we talk about the structure already and the civil. Um, you know, our engineer already know about the site and we propose a, um, a filtration system. And we're gonna design this filtration system as a feature where maybe, you know, cause we have some high part that when in a torrential downpour, maybe a really heavy rain, that we have this, you know, flow of the water. And then when you're waiting on the bus, that's actually a waterfall. And that might be temporary for the next, you know, 15 minutes or whatever. And, and at other time, it's just a regular landscape feature. We could incorporate all those elements, you know, and very, very inexpensively because we double up as motor modal of serving many things at once. And this is about the structure, how the truss is really tie in and it's not a big, big 300 uh, span and uh, phasing. We uh, talk about phasing, what we're going to build here first. And we will propose we build a full third level slab so when the second phase come around, they could actually work on top of the slab and build up. And again, we want the input. Thank you. Thank you. To the extent that you did that and we selected you how flexible are you in terms of moving pieces of the design? Uh, I know you're not you're not on the uh, the Skyway site at all. Is have you thought about if we came to you and said we like your ideas, but hey, we really need to be there? Can well, you can you can you do that? Yes, and I think we can do it better than anyone. The the reason we come up with this design is that. We understand, you know, we could do a design like that and we could do it well, but we want to show you something that you haven't thought about. Perhaps, you know, we could meet in the middle and already we're thinking about, you know, that ramp, you know, of the road, it doesn't need to go all the way to Adam Street. You could actually enter, you know, or, or JTA could actually enter that way and reverse the flow. I mean, there are many ways you could do. It's, it's like Brunelleschi's dome, you know, and you know they, they go you know why don't you show us you know what you're gonna do, you know, well you know he says you know you could make a st egg stand, you know, you go oh you can't make the egg stand, he took that egg, he slammed it on the table and he's standing. He goes oh anyone could do that, you have the knowledge, now, to, you know think about what you're gonna do, what aspect you like, and then we could come up with something new. And that's always the case. We're doing yeah. this without your input, really, only for the program. Yeah, I understand. And we're, yeah. This is, these are conceptual yes. design elements. Yeah. That we've been. And we're, we're good in that. We're, yeah. we're very old. Let me ask you this, because you've integrated the Greyhound and the JTA buildings, mm -hmm. which was not contemplated. And it, 
it would it could create some challenges in terms of the phasing because we had planned to phase Greyhound then the JTA at and the, so um, and, not, and not that we would necessarily be opposed to that but how so talk to us then about the timeline because we do have some expectations from Greyhound in terms of the timing um, that we would have to go talk to them so so what I mean if you did it as your concept shows how fast could we be at construction um well we can be in construction probably within um, six to eight months with okay. the document because you know it depends on you on the approval process too you know okay. right. um. I, I just have one question how does your design and approach to the project um, address ADA compliance? I'm glad you asked that. Um, if you look throughout the, the site, um, the ADA actually come on a level on the high side. You just go in, and then there are steps, and then you just go walk in. Because you enter on the high side, you don't even need a ramp. The only ramp is underneath, and then you know the elevator is taking you throughout. Um, I don't know how to go back, perhaps. Um, so basically, you know, you have a slope site like this, right? And then we set the building in certain level, and then we have steps down, and then we have step down. So the ADA, you know, is here. You walk straight, you go in. And then inside, there's elevator. Yeah. Because you're moving those area ways necessary to build. Right. I mean, a good example here in town is what Mayo is doing on their campus. They're, they build all of their hospitals for vertical expansion, so they don't have to mess up the site but once. Yeah. And then all the construction con yeah. is constricted to the top of the buildings, and everything below works. Uh, you, know, I, you know, our team really thought this throughout. And of course, you know, with those guys, they might point out something. That <laughs> Uh, uh, um, it's an investment in the city, mm -hmm. so it's very important uh, for people to appreciate that part from the city here, so they really understand that aspect of it. And I'm really uh, uh, thinking of the sustainability aspect of it, the alternative transportation aspects. Is there, and this is a one-liner for you, maybe kind of sharing with us again the flexibility of of as buses change or the, the the type of transportation alternative that's available to us, the, the characteristics of that bus, the, the length, the size, the shape as you move into different alternatives. Is, is there yes. enough flexibility there um, so it's not just a, there, there is, a bus station, it's a, yeah. you know, it's a moving car? There is actually the articulate, I really like to stress on the passive thing that we're trying to do, like orientation of the building, those little things that we do, deep sidewalk, visibility, all those things are very urban. And also, I know you, you have you know, um, standards for you know, the sidewalk and lights, and we will work with you to incorporate all that. <laughs> and those standards are more yeah. functionality, like yeah. you indicated, you know, yeah. to make them more urban. So, yeah. so we're not um, necessarily looking for a specific yeah. and, and And we, product. you know, as the adjacent site, like the garage, we could you know, do the downstairs to incorporate more of those, you know, because the land value of the ground is, you know, you're going to take taken by the taxi. So, you know, those are prime real, real estate. So, you know, yes, to answer your question, we could accommodate that, but we do need a little more land area, or we have to talk with JTA, see how we could uh, appropriate what we think best in what area. I have another question. From the customer lobby area, mm -hmm. do you have controlled pedestrian access to the bus bays? You mean here? Yes. Yes. What, what happened is, what is not shown here is that this is all undercover, right? And then we're going to have bus lines, and again, that's operational, where you're going to have designated electronic where first come, first serve, you know, like bus number five, and then this become bus number five, and then, you know, two hours later, this could be 10 or whatever, or designated area. If you have the electronic one, actually, you could move the bus a lot more efficient, but it's, as in, 
let's say this area could be multiple area for different uh, routes. Yeah, I'm most concerned though, um, and, and I'll restate the question, mm -hmm. when you have people leaving the customer waiting area mm -hmm. and they're going to a bay, yes. say is in the middle of the facility, is there controlled access to keep people from yes. walking in front or behind yes. all the other buses in the yes. lane? Yes. Is with any other bus, we put it here where you go across and enter this. So that's only, you know, forward. There's no backward. The bus driver always see you. And this is, you know, basically it's sloping this way and this way. So the handicap is just merged, mm -hmm. and the cross, cross, um, the cross slope is, you know, more than adequate. Fine. Okay. And and then you access these. You access these, and this one you cross over and access these. So we will stripe those accordingly, and we're going to have you know lights so the bus driver would know, and it's all view here, so the bus driver you know. So if you walk down lane see. two and you're in the wrong lane, you got to walk all the way back out. No, then you could cross here. Okay. On, on the front, I mean we're going to have those crossings, okay. but yeah, it's not unlike any other big facility that we need to do that. Unless you spend the money in overhead or on the ground that goes into these Do you envision any changes in the Skyway module? Um, yeah, I envision just improving it, not, you know, redoing it. I, I love to reclad it and make it look, you know, more modern. And I, I don't think, you know, that all depends on the budget that we're going to receive. Because right now we're just adding, you know, like almost an area where the the um, the skyway, uh, I mean the skyway bridge, come across mm -hmm. and with set of elevators and escalator descending down, and and the thing goes. What consideration have you given to the uh, maintenance costs of the facility? Well, we do we do consider that all the you know is one of the sustainable things, the maintenance and the durability of it, and uh, and that that's why we want to uh, advise you to do the uh, basically the chiller plant, and that's why we advise you to use the concrete system that we're going to use. So whatever we use have a very high um, um, you know value that keep it low maintenance and also whatever we choose is product that are sustainable that, that, that's great and from the concrete standpoint there's some really nice admixtures for for corrosion in, inhibitors there are a lot of nice admixtures you can add to the concrete that can extend your life out 50 75 years before you start having to do those concrete repairs yeah. so you know that's what we'll be recommending in the mixes yeah. to extend that life. The, the idea, talking back in that, the idea is to have this facility built and it still be good in 80 years from now. And, and that's the urban thing to do. If we put all the buses on gray, you know, pretty soon the land value go up, then they're going to say, hey, you know, we need this space. We, you know, because, and, and that's not, you know, that's more suburban than being urban. Um, there's some thought that with automated vehicles that, you know, drop, building a parking garage is maybe not the best thing to do or that if you build a parking garage in anticipation that it may be retrofit at some point. Have you, have you looked at that? Is that something you think about in the design of the garage that it may have a different use at some point? Well, we did have a you know, have a discussion on the garage and uh, when it should be built and when, what to do. Because even with that, you know, now a lot of garages, the floor to floor height is actually higher. So the, right. the floor to floor height is actually higher. So the emergency vehicle could access all, all the floors. And some of the, you know, some of the, the, um, the city is debating to, to uh, implement that. Um, as for the, you know, the, the smart car technology, we didn't really 
you know, think about that. And you know, when you brought it up, we definitely look into it and see what we can do about it. Any other questions? Jim, did you have any thoughts from a, their DDR, BDIA kind of review process that may be worth uh, talking about now? Or? Um, I think uh, the comments would be uh, the DDRB does look at the, where is the two build hat. Uh, one of it is aesthetic and one is the economic aspect of it. So those, that dialogue and the presentation appears to be pretty much hit with what we've seen here and, and some of the questions of context is going to be very, very important, uh, which I, I felt like uh, there, was, there were hits on, on that relationship of the downtown area to those uh, Neighborhoods, and that that is going to be very important. Is that there's connectivity? There's a map of it on the side of the. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was curious if they were going to move. I think they they would certainly get support for moving that Greyhound uh, emblem or symbol somewhere on the uh, side over there. So uh, it's it's got a lot of fun uh, history to it. I think so. Connectivity is going to be very important for, to the to the neighborhoods of it from that aspect. Yeah. Also, isolation. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Any final comments? Questions? We have about Great job, guys. Thank you. Really appreciate Thank you. your your work. Thank you. So we like to end with being distinctive, distinctively, JRTC, evocative. Evoke, reflect, La Villa, Jacksonville, and transportation, and creative. Let's get together and create this thing, and implement. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.